Hi, I'm Sui. Today I'm going to present approach to a patient with joint pain and swelling created by Sophie. We use 6S for approaching joint swelling. The first S stands for the single or several joints involved. The conditions that involve only one joint are memorized using a acronym called SINGER. These are sepsis, injury, neoplasm, gout, loose body, and erythrocytes. Monoarthropathy is very common presentation. The conditions that involve more than one joint are memorized using acronyms called several. Polyarthropathies are rare presentation than monoarthropathy. Here, STD stands for sexually transmitted disease. Some can present as either a mono or polyarthritic picture, such as OA, osteoarthritis, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, connective tissue disease, and spondyloarthritis. Here is a summary of all the previous slides. They are frequency of symptoms, separate them into following categories. Please go through these at your own pace. Next, we need to carefully identify whether it came from the joint itself or periarticular problem. Then, if it is affecting multiple joints or we check whether they affect symmetrically or not. Someone come with joint pain and swelling, it is important to look for joint-specific periarticular syndrome rather than it coming from the joint itself. For example, foot and ankle pain and swelling might be Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, etc. Polyperiarticular fibromyalgia, polymyalgia rheumatic uh, can mime it with other polyarthropathy. Now, looking for symmetry and asymmetry of polyarticular problem. OA and endocarditis are usually presented as asymmetrical. RA, SLE, and other connective tissue disease, viral, Lyme are usually symmetrical. You can see details in the next slide. SLE, systematic lupus erythematous, MCTD, missed connective tissue disorder, JIA, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Third S for joint assessment is sequence of symptoms. Generally speaking, infectious, post-infectious injury are presented as acute joint pain or swelling. In this slide with yellow fonts are acute. As you can see, almost all of the causes of polyarthropathies are acutely presented. After excluding periarticular causes, looking at symmetrical acutely presentation, then we narrow down differential diagnosis by checking the history is consistent with inflammatory cause or not. If they are not consistent with inflammatory causes, it might be OA, injury, neoplasm, or pseudogout. If the history consistent with the inflammatory cause and if it is affecting only one joint, we need to look for the finding listed in this green box. If your patient has six or more of these findings, give a diagnosis of gout. If not, go for joint aspiration. If the history consistent with inflammatory cause and polyarticular, investigate further for SLE or RE. Here is the concept met for joint swelling. 
please feel free to pause this video and take a moment to digest. Here is the diagnostic criteria for rheumatic fever. The Jones criteria can be divided into major and minor criteria. You need two major or one major and one minor and evidence of a recent strep A infection to diagnose rheumatic fever. Then we need to look for other systematic effects in skin, eyes, CVS examination, respiratory examination, and apto examination. These associated symptoms will further narrow down your diagnosis. Some other investigation can support your diagnosis. Some pathology has specific findings. Here are some examples. A hot joint is easy to recognize, but has many causes. Here is a summary slide for our concept map. Remember to use 6S for systematic approach to get your diagnosis. This presentation also provides many facts on top of concept math. Hope it is useful for you. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy it.